book of 1 Kings, chapter number 1. I'm thankful for the Word of God. I'm thankful for them Daniel and the Lion's Den passages, those parting of the Red Sea passages. Certainly thankful for the passages on Calvary and the passages on the resurrection day and the tomb is empty. But this passage is just as much of the Bible as those passages. But this passage just reminds me that God deals with us where we are and what we're going through. And that, to be honest with you, this just lets me know that man didn't write the Bible. Because if man wrote the Bible, this passage wouldn't be in there. But it's an interesting passage. And uh, I, I, was, I was reading some scripture yesterday and just trying to wrap my mind around some things and, and uh, had no idea that I'd be preaching on this passage tonight. But the Lord just, I read it and then I moved on and did some other things and read some other things and put that message together we had this morning and I kept reading it, but I couldn't get away from this passage. And the Lord just kind of showed me what he wanted me to know out of this passage. So... 1 Kings chapter number 1, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now David was old and stricken in years. And they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Wherefore his servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king. Let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my... Lord, the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel and found Abishag, a Shumanite, and brother to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We're thankful you're always on time. We're thankful that you carry us and our burdens. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that you are our helper. You're the lifter of our head. You're the lifter of our hearts. One of these days, Lord, you're going to lift us out of here. God, we're looking forward to that day. Now, Lord, we thank you for the good singing tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the good time of fellowship before the service. We thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. Thank you for those that are working with our young people on the other side. I pray for those young people. Lord, all the peer pressure and all the things they face wicked world I pray that you Lord would help them you would encourage them you would help them to hide the word of God in their heart that they might not sin against thee I pray you would strengthen them and Lord you do something special for them even back there tonight Lord I pray for revival Lord we're excited about a meeting but Lord we're praying for you to rend the heavens and come and take up your boat and change us and transform us in your likeness I pray for a movement of the power of God that, Lord, uh, uh, we couldn't be the same, but our community wouldn't be as the same, and may it fan throughout this land, and may souls be saved by the good grace of God. Now, Lord, you know what we stand in need of tonight. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel one more time. I pray you'd speak to hearts, and I pray that Jesus would be highly exalted. And, Father, will not fail to bless you and praise you for all that you do. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for first loving us, for it's in your wonderful name we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want you to notice a few things as a way of introduction to the text. I want you to notice, first of all, the plight of David. Look in verse number 1 again. The Bible says, Now King David was old and stricken in years. This is not David that slew Goliath. Matter of fact, that happened over 50 years ago in the life of David. David has now been the king for about 40 years in Israel. And David, in just a little bit of time, is going to cross over. He's just about finished on this earth. And can I say, my dear friends, a lot of us have served the Lord for a long time. And we can look around this world and see things are different. But isn't it a blessing to have a hope that no matter what goes on, we're about to cross over. What a blessing. We see the plight of David, but notice the plan of his advisors. Isn't this just like people thinking logically? Look what they say. 
Wherefore servants said unto him, verse 2, Let there be sought for my lord the king a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, let her cherish him, let her lie in his bosom, that my lord uh, the king may get heat. Now here David's gotten old. He's not doing well. They keep putting more blankets on him, and he can't get warm. It was 68 degrees in South Carolina on Friday when I left there, and ever since I've left there, I've been cold. Uh, it's just, I, I just can't get warm. Hmm? Uh, I can't wait till I get to the colonel's age. Lord have mercy, you must freeze all the time. You probably freeze in the summer, huh? Well, David's got to the point he's got old. His circulation isn't what it used to be, and he just can't get warm. And so his advisors are so smart, they think, well, we know what to help him. Let's go get a young virgin and have her come and lay with That's going to warm him up, huh? It doesn't, so doesn't some people's ideals, aren't they just really ignorant? Uh, have you ever listened to any of these politicians talk? Uh, smart people, but they're, they're supposed to be smart people, but they're ignorant. That's a dumb plan. Uh, but that's the plan they came up with. Uh, it amazes me how some people's minds or brains have divorced them for non-support. I mean, just some of the things people come up with. Uh, it's like, uh, Brother Ray, we're going to grow you more hair putting peanut butter on your head. Now, what's that going to do? But that's about as makes as much sense as what they're saying. So we see the plan of his advisors. We see the plight of David. But notice the pursuit that ensued. Look at verse number 3. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel and found Abishag the Shumanite and brought her to the king. Now, listen, they're so serious about this plan. They send out word throughout all Israel and they do a search. They're searching everywhere for a damsel. Can you imagine that wanted young virgin who wants to be with some old man about to die? I mean, I, I, really, think about it. This thing doesn't make sense, but they searched everywhere to find the right one, huh? It don't matter any of them. It wasn't going to work. But still they pursued it. Isn't it amazing how some people will pursue to the ends of the earth looking for some pleasure, looking for some happiness, looking for some peace? Uh, and friend, you can search under every stone in this world and never be satisfied. The only peace you'll ever have is when you have peace with God uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but thankfully, notice the privatary shown by David. Look in verse number 4. And the damsel was very fair. And cherished the king and ministered to him. What that meant is she just served him. She went and got him food. She went and took care of him. She ministered unto him. But look at this last cause. Thank the Lord for this. But the king knew her not. At least David in his old age had more sense than his advisors. He didn't defile that young woman. Nor did uh, 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 he, he realize it wouldn't work. And so he didn't deal with any of that. What a blessing. But I want to take a closer look at verse number 1. I want to look at David. Look at verse number 1. Notice David and his condition. Again in verse number 1, Now King David was old and stricken in years. He's an old man. Now, listen. <clears throat> I'm not as old as some of y'all, but I'm headed that direction. And when I was a young man, if somebody told me they were 60, I'd have said they're really ancient. But when people get older, they start talking about not being able to do things like you used to be able to do, and you think, Psh, people are crazy. But it's amazing. When you get old, you can't see like you see. You can't hear like you used to hear. Uh, everything affects you different. But your mind wants you to think you're 15. Hmm? But just think about this. Colonel, think about all them railroad ties you lifted over the years. Now you're starting to wish you didn't do all that foolish stuff, huh? isn't it? Huh? Huh? Brother Clint, I'm starting to wish that, think that I, I never played any ball back in the day. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you got to get out of bed and you got to pop and crack and moan and groan just to stand up straight. You know, you're starting to Rethink some of that foolish stuff you did when you was younger, huh? Brother Ray, how, how many, you know, things that you wish you'd have done different, you know, back when you was younger, you know, maybe wore some 
ear protection and maybe didn't do so, all that foolish stuff you used to do and all that that your mom and dad don't know about that I won't talk about because they might be watching tonight and all that kind of, isn't that a blessing? Uh, uh, I'm thinking, hey, I think about some of the stupid things I did in cars. I mean, Lord have mercy. How about some of the stupid things you did on bikes? Huh? No, not you, huh? Uh, you've done stupid things on bikes since I've known you, huh? Uh, no comment. But when we get old, now think about David. Think about all the battles that that man fought. When he was a young man, they used to say that David had his 10,000. In other words, he slew 10,000 men. I'm talking about he didn't shoot 10,000. He slew them with a sword. I mean, he was in hand-to-hand, -hand bloody warfare con uh, conflict for much of his young man's years. And now he's old. Now he's stricken in age. Hmm? He can't do the things that he used to do. And he's laying there in that bed regretting a lot of things that he did. We see his condition. I want you to notice that he was covered. Look at him. Verse number 1. And they covered him with clothes. They piled him on it. David probably only weighed about 165 pounds, but he looked like he weighed 400, all the clothes they had on him. I mean, they had him covered up. And then notice, if you will, he's still cold. Look what it says. But he get no heat. Now tonight as we sit here, many of us have been in this battle for the Lord for a long time. A lot of us have some battle scars from serving the Lord. Listen, we don't have any scars from the Lord, but we've got scars from the battle. There's been times we've had to have conflicts with the devil. There's times we've had conflicts with our flesh. There's times we've had conflicts with the war world. Uh, uh, there's been times we've donned uh, the whole armor of God, and we've went to battle, and we've went to war, and we've tried to serve God faithfully. Uh, but yet, if you study uh, 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 the, uh, the, the armor of God, there is nothing for the back. And there's some of us got scars in the back uh, where folks that we served the Lord with stabbed us in the back and did us wrong. Uh, and we face many conflicts. Uh, and uh, we've served the Lord for a long time. But what a blessing. We're still in the fight. Uh, still serving God. Uh, still getting up every day. Uh, ready to put on the helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. Uh, having our feet shot with the preparation of gospel peace. Uh, having the sword of the spirit. Uh, having the shield of faith. Uh, we're still uh, having at it. Uh, but we've gotten uh, uh, older in age. We see that. Uh, and then notice he's been covered. What a blessing. Aren't you glad uh, the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to your life? Uh, aren't you glad? Hallelujah. What a blessing. Uh, uh, no matter what comes. Uh, yes, Brother Daniel, we're sealed until the day of redemption. Uh, nothing can change my standing with God. I'm saved by the good grace of God. Uh, I'm a citizen of heaven. Uh, my conversation's recorded over there. Uh, hey, as Brother Phil says, I'm heaven bound with the hammer down. Uh, what a blessing to know. I'm going to heaven uh, been covered by the blood of the lamb uh, but then notice he's cold he get no heat some of us have been fighting this fight for a long time we've been saved covered by the blood of the lamb but yet if you're not careful you'll get cold I want to preach on this thought I want to preach on when you don't have any heat the Bible said that he got no heat. Huh? You can be well acquainted with the warfare in the Christian life. You can be covered by the blood, but if you're not careful, you can be looking for some heat. Mm -mm. Huh? When you don't have any heat. I got to thinking about when you don't have any heat. Mm -mm. I don't know about some of the younger ones. Naj and Naren have no idea they're from the Caribbean. Uh, Naren's already freezing to death. Some of you remember back in the day, maybe the blizzard of 77, when all the power went out and you didn't have any heat? Hmm? Some of you said, boy, thank God we had a wood-burning furnace. I remember we went to my grandparents' house because they had an oil-burning furnace. But can, I, can I say, I've been in a place that didn't have any heat. You ever been there? Hmm? 
three of us, huh? rest of you spoiled, huh? Well, I got to think about when you don't have any heat. What do you do when you don't have any heat? Can I say, you, uh, first of all, you need some movement. You don't want to sit still when you don't have any heat. You might freeze to death. Huh? You need to be up moving around. Uh, 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 hey, I thought about this. Uh, uh, there's been times you get cold, you start doing some jumping jacks. Uh, I, I remember as a young man, Brother Clint probably still does this, uh, 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 I'd go out and run a mile when it'd be in the wintertime, uh, me sweating up a storm. And I mean, everybody else freezing to death. Hey, uh, when you got no heat, you need to have some movement. Uh, and hey, I got good news. Uh, uh, we need some movement uh, 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 from heaven next week we got revival meeting if you're here tonight and you're cold uh, you need some movement uh, hey I got to think we need some movement from the father uh, the bible says draw nigh to God he'll draw nigh to you uh, hey uh, uh, the movement from the father's conditional on us realizing we need him in our life uh, and every step we take towards him uh, he takes a step toward us uh, friend just keep stepping towards Towards him till you run into him. Uh, we need some movement from the Father. Uh, hey, uh, we need some movement towards the fire. Uh, it amazes me, just like these guys had this silly idea to warm David up. Uh, it amazes me uh, when folks get cold and different on God. Uh, they think, well, I'll just get a little bit closer to the world. Uh, you're never going to find any heat in the world. Uh, you need to get closer to the fire. Uh, get closer to the things of God. Uh, I'll move up a little closer. Uh, get up to where you can warm around the fire. Uh, you just might get warmed up. We need movement towards the Father, uh, movement towards the fire, uh, and we need movement of faith. Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Uh, I'm sitting down saying, I think it'll happen. Uh, it'll never happen. But, but stand it up, move it towards God in my faith, taking God and His promises. Uh, you get to study the promises of God. Uh, it just might warm you up. Hallelujah. Huh? I said... Uh, when you got no heat, you need some movement. Unfortunately, we got a lot of popsicles in the pew. You just need a movement. Amen. Movement of God. Amen. I'm praying God falls in here next week like it never has before. Yeah. And we see a movement of God. When you don't have any heat, you need some movement. I thought about this. When you don't have any heat, you need some moisture. I don't know about you, but I need some dew from heaven. Now, some of y'all, when you get cold, you get some of that nasty moisture called coffee. You don't drink coffee to keep you cold. You drink coffee to warm you up. We went to one of my nephew's football games here a few weeks ago. It was a little cold and rainy. I said, what did you do? I went down and got up me and Miss Nett's hot chocolate because I wanted warmed up. Now, it was nasty. But it warmed me up. Didn't have much chocolate, but it had a whole lot of hot. Thank the Lord for that. Uh, what I'm saying is when you get to, to the point where you need some heat, you need some moisture, you, you need something. Uh, from heaven aren't you glad uh, for the liquid love from the word of God aren't you glad uh, uh, that God uh, knows how to rain something down in our soul we need showers of blessing from heaven uh, that moisture just might warm us up uh, I got to thinking you don't have any heat you need some movement you need some moisture you might need a mechanic you might need somebody that can, knows how to work on your furnace now listen, when my furnace isn't working, I'm not calling a plumber. Right. I'm first going to call Brother Ray. But if Brother Ray don't know about my furnace, I'm going to call a furnace man. I'm going to call a mechanic, get in there and get that furnace working because I'm going to freeze to death. I need something uh, 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 working in my furnace. Uh, listen, uh, my dear friends, I got good news. We got some mechanics coming next week. Uh, we got some repairmen coming. Uh, we got men that will take this word of God they'll open it up uh, and God will use it as a tool uh, knows how to turn right here and how to work on this how to work on that uh, for long uh, uh, your cold furnace will start blazing out some heat again uh, what a blessing that God's got some men uh, know how to take this blessed old book uh, and work on our hearts and work on our lives uh, hey aren't you glad for repairment of God huh? 
Uh, we need some movement, some revival. We need some moisture, some refreshment. We need uh, some mechanics, some repairmen. Aren't you glad that this book is so wonderful? It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It knows how to convict us when we're wrong, but it knows how to soothe us when we've been cut. It's a balm of Gilead. It knows exactly what we stand in need of. And isn't it like God can give one man one message and it ministers to everybody in the house? Oh, what a God, huh? I'm telling you, when you got no heat, you might need a movement. You might need some moisture. You might need a mechanic. You might need revival, refreshment, or repairment. I thought about this. When you got no heat, you might need a memory. You might need a reminder. Uh, Brother Sammy sent me a video yesterday, St. Lucia. Show me all the building, all the work. Now, I'm sure somebody requested it, and Brother Sammy, anytime anybody asks for something uh, concerning uh, ambassador, concerning Christ for the Caribbean, Brother Sammy sends it to me. Now, Brother Sammy don't always send me why he's sending it to me, but I always get stuff from Brother Sammy. So I just got to kind of read between the lines. But I got this four-minute video, and I'm looking over. I was just there a few weeks ago, but I've been there several times. I was just looking over, and I'm seeing all the building. I'm remembering services that we've had in there, remembering how God's moved and how God's blessed. And then it goes up on top, and he's showing the Caribbean Sea, and he's showing all the palm trees and all that. All of a sudden, I wasn't as cold as I was before I watched that video. Mm. Uh, sometimes we need a memory. Sometimes we need to go back and remember when God found us. Sometimes we need to go back and remember when God answered prayer. Sometimes remember we got to need to remember go back to that service when God just blew through and showed up and did something for us. Sometimes we need to remember that song that got us over the uh, the hump. Sometimes we just remember that passage, that promise. Uh, hey, uh, sometimes when you need to uh, warmed up, you just need a memory, a reminder. Uh, aren't you glad uh, God knows we're human? Uh, and the lyrics of that song says, "And humans forget." Uh, so remind me. Uh, remind Remind me, dear Lord, uh, I don't know how many times I've heard Amazing Grace, how sweet the song in my 49 years of being saved, uh, but it's still sweet, uh, and it still blesses. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, God can take us back uh, and remind us of the good grace of God in our lives. Uh, sometimes when you don't have any heat, just a memory will warm you up. In Jeremiah chapter 2, the Lord said, I remember thee in the love of thine espousals when thou wentest after me in a land that, in a wilderness that was not sown. Uh, since we didn't have no comment before, you remember when you first met Miss Veronica? Remember how pretty she was and you thought she'll never talk to me because you was a scumbag. Yeah. Uh, uh, Remember the first time she held your hand? Uh, right now, you're getting warmed up. Just think about it. I'm seeing a hot flash right now, huh? Uh, I remember the first time Miss Nett held my hand. Uh, been over 35 years ago. I took her to the Cincinnati Zoo. I figured she'd get close to me if she smells them elephants. Uh, got out of the car, headed to the zoo, Colonel. I reached out my hand. She put her hand in my hand, and I've smitten, been smitten ever since. Uh, say, so how can you remember that, preacher? Because it impacted my life. Uh, and can I say there are times, if you can go back and remember when God's done something for you, all the coldness will melt away. Uh, all the sweetness will come back. Huh? Hey, that frown will get turned upside down. You'll have a happy face, huh? Why? Because God's got an innate ability of reminding us of the goodness and grace of God. Uh, I thought about this. I mean, you don't have any heat. Sometimes you need some movement, revival. Sometimes you need some moisture, refreshment. Sometimes you need a mechanic, a repairman. Sometimes you need a memory, a reminder. Then last time, sometimes you need a miracle. 
Sometimes you need reinforcement from the glory world. Sometimes you need that thing that only God can do. Uh, Miss Jackie, I'm, I'm appreciative of friends and fellow saints that God allows us to worship with, and sometimes just a good, good word, fitly spoken from somebody, will be a help to us. Uh, sometimes somebody come up and tell you, I just appreciate you and thank you in the Lord. That'll help you. Sometimes somebody put their arm around you and say, I just want you to know I love you in the Lord. That'll help you. But then there's times that only God can give you what you need. Right. And sometimes we just need something miraculous from heaven. When he shows up right on time, yeah. when we've got to the point we don't know we can take another step, we don't think we can go on, we get to the point where we're about ready to throw in the towel, Brother Donald. We just don't know which way to turn. And all of a sudden, God will show up. And He'll do something miraculous in our heart, and our life, that makes us feel so dumb that we thought about throwing in the towel. He just sends us reinforcements from heaven. Uh, I'm reminded in 1 Samuel chapter 30, David and his men have been on journey for a while. They get to Ziklag, and the city's burned, and their wives and children have been taken. And they want to stone David. They fail to realize David's wives and children have been taken too. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. So what happened? He went and got warm is what he did. Then they decided, the Lord told him, go and recover your wives and children. So him and his men took off. They're coming down on the Amalekites, and there was a certain uh, segment of the men, Brother Ed. They went as far as physically they could go. They couldn't go any farther, Miss Tammy. They wanted to, but they were just too weak and too worn out. And David set by the supplies and the stuff they'd need for reinforcements. And he told those men, he said, just tarry with the stuff. Just stick by the stuff. Well, David and the rest of the men went down. They won the battle. They got their families back and they got all the spoils of the war, all the gold and silver and all the treasure. And they came back and when David saw them people tearing by the stuff, he saluted them. The rest of the men said, they didn't go down and fight. They don't deserve any of the spoils of the war. He said, those that tarried by the stuff get just the same reward as those that fought the fight. Now, I said all that to say our heavenly David might be riding by in the next week. And he might come by and just give you a salute. Uh, and thank you for tearing by the stuff. Uh, he might just have a reward for you uh, for not quitting, not giving up. Uh, sometimes uh, just a salute from heaven's all we need uh, uh, to keep us uh, going, uh, uh, to keep us uh, 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 on the firing line. Uh, and friend, uh, don't give up on him now. He might be just around the corner. Uh, he's got reinforcement in his wings. Uh, he's got exactly what you need from him tonight. Uh, Mike came in a little cold. You don't have to leave that way. You don't need anything from the world to warm you up. You just need a touch from heaven. And the Lord can take that coldness away. Take that hole in your heart and fill it with Him. That'll warm you up, friend. And listen, it don't matter if you've been saved a week or saved a long time. The same Lord over all is rich. He's rich unto all them that call upon Him. And He has exactly what you need tonight. You might have gotten a little cold on God. I've got good news. He's not got cold on you. And He wants to help you tonight. So tonight, if things aren't as fresh, if things aren't as fiery, if things aren't what they used to be, they can be. And even though you might be, not be ablaze tonight, you still got a little fire in your heart, in your soul. And God wants to throw another log on your fire and warm you up. How about it tonight?
You tired of being cold? You don't have to be cold. Don't wait till next week to get revived. Get something from God tonight that will propel you through next week and let God do something grand around here tonight. Hey, when you don't have any heat, you got to go back to the right source, and His name is Jesus, and He can warm you up. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, how come get your guitar, get something ready, pick for invitation. Might have got a little cold since camp meeting. You don't have to stay that way. You can get warmed up tonight. Say, preacher, it's been a long time since I felt the touch of God in my life. Why don't you come and ask Him to touch you? Say, preacher, it's been a long time since I got some help from God. Why don't you come and ask Him to help you? Why don't you come and ask Him to set your soul afire? That old hymn, set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Will you ask the Lord to warm you up? He's getting ready to pick a song. Some are praying. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we're thankful that you're the true source that we need to warm us up. We're thankful, Lord, that you're present help in time of need. Lord, the psalmist said he'd looked unto the hills from whence cometh this help, this help coming from the Lord. Help us to stop looking around and start looking up and we can find help for our soul. Now, Lord, you know the need of every heart here tonight. God, I pray that the sweet Holy Spirit would now speak to hearts. And God, I pray folks would do business with God. I pray you'd send revival these days. I pray we'd see your people set on fire. We'd see many that are strangers to the grace of God come to trust in Christ. Now, blessing this invitation, these are in the altar, those praying in their pews. God, you'd speak to hearts. We'll bless you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.